This is a bumblebee. There are more than 200 species of bumblebee in the world and more than 50 species of bumblebee native to North America. A bumblebee colony lasts one year. It is created in the spring when a bumblebee queen ends her hibernation and begins producing female workers. At the peak of the season, she stops producing workers and starts producing drones or male bees from unfertilized eggs. While the female worker goes out and collects nectar and pollen to return to the hive, the male worker simply eats as much as he can get away with before he's kicked out to go search for queens to mate with. When a queen starts producing drones, she stops producing workers. This means that there are no longer workers to replace old workers as they die. And eventually, the whole colony will be dead, except for the male bees and the new queens. The new queens will spend the summer and the early fall mating with the male bees, then they will hibernate during the winter and make their own colony in the spring. Honeybees, or Western or European honeybees, are the other kind of bees that humans have domesticated for use in pollination. Honeybees are not native to North America, and because they are not adapted to many of the cold temperatures here, they are not often found surviving in the wild. Honeybee colonies are much like bumblebee colonies in that there is a single female egg-producing queen, female workers, and male drones. Unlike a bumblebee colony, however, a honeybee hive can last for several years with the queen and workers hibernating during winter. This is why the workers must spend the summer and the spring creating honey, so that during the winter, when temperatures are too cold and there is no pollen or nectar readily available, they will still have food to eat. A honeybee hive may still starve to death, however, if the temperatures are too cold for them to move from one section of the hive to a new section with more honey. So sometimes the beekeeper must provide the hive with additional honey in order to prevent the bees from starving before spring arrives. So now we know a little bit about bumblebees and honeybees, but why does this matter? Well, it matters because we care about pollination. Many plants require animal pollinators for pollination, and bumblebees and bees in general are some of the most animal pollinators. Though there isn't enough recent verified data to paint a really clear picture, conservative estimates suggest that bees contribute to the protection of one third of the food we eat, and honeybees alone contribute $14.6 billion worth of services to the agricultural industry each year. This isn't surprising when you consider that more than 1,000 fruits and vegetables require bees for pollination. Apples, beans, berries, cabbage, garlic, kale, potatoes. I could spend the rest of my talk just listing fruits and vegetables that we would not have if it weren't for bees. This technique is the only efficient way to pollinate plants like tomatoes, eggplants, and blueberries the bumblebee grabs the flower by the anthers, decouples its flight muscles from the wings, and uses them to shake the flower violently. The only way to get the blossom to dislodge its pollen. So this video you just, you just watched is about buzz pollination. Buzz pollination is one of the reasons why bumblebees are better pollinators than other types of bees, like honeybees and solitary bees. While honeybees are very important for uh, pollinating our crops, we need bumblebees not only for pollinating our crops, but for pollinating our environment. Wild bees, or bees that are not domesticated, like honeybees, uh, are in North America, bumblebees and solitary bees. Solitary bees don't live in a colony like honeybees and bumblebees, are why this is so important. But while solitary bees are also important, bumblebees are more numerous, and the fact that they live in a colony makes them better pollinators. So in addition to buzz pollination, bumblebees are also just hairier. As you can see in these photos, which I took using scanning electron microscopy, a method of photography that essentially involves firing an electron at an item to get a very detailed picture of it, you can see that the bumblebee is covered in pollen all over its stinger, on its hairs, even on its wing, the bumblebee, because it is hairier, just naturally can collect more pollen than other types of bees. There is also research that suggests that bumblebees are better at operating in greenhouses than honeybees. This makes them better at pollinating crops like tomatoes. Because of buzz pollination, they are also better at pollinating this crop, red clover. Two summers ago, when I did research at Oregon State University, I visited this field of red clover and conducted a pollinator survey. A pollinator survey is when you select a section of a crop to observe for a certain time period, and you count all the bugs that visit and try and figure out what types they are. 
The first time that I visited this field, I saw that there was a honeybee hive that the farmers had placed about a dozen feet away from the section of crop that I was observing. During my first period of observation, I counted more than 70 bumblebees that had come from the nearby forest independently and on their own. But I only counted six honeybees. When I visited again a few weeks later, the bloom was almost done, so the farmers had moved the honeybee hive right next to the crop. This time, while I counted 20 bumble wild bumblebees visiting, I didn't count a single honeybee. This is because bumblebees are much better at pollinating this type of flower, and because of buzz pollination, they have an advantage when it comes to collecting pollen that honeybees simply don't have. So it didn't matter how close the farmers moved the honeybee hive to this crop, the honeybees would prefer to go find a different flower and source of food elsewhere. Yet without lifting a finger, the farmers benefited from the wild bumblebees that were in the area that came to pollinate the crop. Bumblebees are frequently overlooked because we don't use them commercially as much as we do honeybees. But we cannot afford to, to overlook the bumblebee just because of this. Bumblebees are, because of their buzz pollination, because they're so hairy, and because they're better, they have different foraging behavior, they're more efficient at pollinating certain crops. And all animals and plants in the wild in North America depend on bumblebees for pollination in some form or another. As I stated earlier, there are more than 200 species of bumblebee in the world and more than 50 species of bumblebee native to North America. But many of these species populations are declining. The rusty patched bumblebee is the first bee native to the continental U.S. to be officially declared an endangered species. Its population has decreased by 95% and its range by almost half. Imagine if this were the case for all bumblebees. And it very well could be because the factors causing rusty patched bumblebee populations to decline affect all bees. So what are some of the factors causing bumblebee populations to decline? Today, I'd like to discuss the two that I can best speak to, agriculture and climate change. In terms of agriculture, there are two main factors affecting bumblebee populations. Pesticides, or the use of insecticides meant to dissuade pests like aphids, fruit flies, darkling beetles, and other insects from feeding on plants, also negatively affect insect pollinators like bumblebees. Neonicotinoids, a class of neuroactive pesticide, is one such pesticide that has been demonstrated to be particularly harmful to bumblebees. In fact, the European Union has banned most of this class of drugs for that very reason, but the US has not. The insufficient regulation of pesticides means that bumblebees are not free to land on or feed from the very flowers they're supposed to pollinate. Monocropping, the practice of growing only one crop for acres and acres, is also harmful to bees. Take almonds, for example. California produces 82% of the world's almonds, and its closest competitor is the EU, which only produces 6%. So any almonds or products that you use that have almonds in them that you consume in the United States probably used almonds coming from California. During almond season, honeybees are transported from across the country, even from Maine, to go pollinate the blooms in California. For a few short weeks, millions of transported honeybees and wild bumblebees pollinate like crazy, and their populations boom. But then, all at once, all the, al all the almond bloom is done, and there's not another plant in sight. This isn't such a big problem for the honeybees, because the honeybee keepers will simply collect their honeybee hives and return them back across the country, feeding them nectar and pollen as necessary along the way. The bumblebees are left in a much worse situation. Without any source of food, many of the bumblebee colonies will starve to death before they can produce male drones or new queens for the next generation. As consumers, there are two things that we can do that are very simple to try and support sustainable agriculture and help bumblebee populations. First, buying natural and organic goods mean that you're more likely to be using fewer pesticides and not the worst ones. Second, supporting small and local farms, even if it means not supporting or buying goods such as almonds, means that you're not supporting monocropping. The second factor that, affects, that negatively affects bumblebee populations is climate change. Rising temperatures caused by climate change mean that bumblebees are spending more time at the entrance of their hive, fanning it literally to keep the inside of the nest cool, and less time out foraging for pollen and nectar that they need to eat. So not only does climate change mean that bees are more likely of overheating and dying, it means that they're more likely to starve to death. Climate change can also cause a mismatch in seasons. So flowers may bloom before the bees are active and out, which means that fewer flowers are pollinated, 
and bees don't have enough time or resources to produce the drones or the new queens that they need to for there to be a next generation. Flooding, drought, severe weather, these can also impact nests. And bumblebees are more um, threatened by these factors than other types of bees because the future of an entire colony depends on a single bumblebee queen's ability to safely forage and create her colony in the few early spring months. Climate change is a broad and complex issue, not easily affected by the actions of individuals. But by working to reduce our fossil fuel consumption and by supporting uh, companies and legislature that also work to do this, we can help to address climate change. So up until now, I've focused on uh, the plight of the bumblebees from a variety of perspectives. We compared honeybees to bumblebees, we considered pollination, and we looked at two of the reasons why bumblebee populations are declining. But let's take a moment to look at the bigger picture. Who here has seen the bee movie? Well, the bee movie is a great movie. It's not terribly realistic. At the end of the movie, the entire world has no plants and flowers because the bees have stopped pollinating. But in a dramatic turn of events, the bees unite, pollinate the whole world, and it certainly starts to look like spring. In reality, as bumblebee populations decline, crop yield will decrease and ecosystem health will suffer. I can certainly imagine that the world might begin to look bloomless as fewer flowers are pollinated each year, leaving fewer flowers to bloom in the next. You can say goodbye to foods like almonds and pumpkins that are pollinated entirely by bees and don't expect to eat foods like avocados or blueberries very frequently either. Prices of produce will increase as we're forced to turn to alternative methods of pollination. In fact, China has already started using hand pollination for their apple blooms as their bee populations are declining as well. Just think for a second about how much it costs to hire one human worker to do a less, a less efficient job in comparison to what a bumblebee can do for free. While in the bee movie, the solution may seem simple, in, rea in reality it's not, and the solution is not going to come quickly either. It takes a species a long time to recover, even when the factors causing their demise have been rectified. We're looking at a long process to, to solve even the relatively simple issue of pesticide usage, let alone the more complex issue of climate change. Bumblebees matter to all of us, and it is up to all of us to pay attention and take action to save the bumblebees. Thank you.